Okay, so um, for this first short talk, uh, we're going to have Alex and Alex uh, from Checkpoint. Um, uh, so which one is Alex? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you have the pictures on the screen. So Alexander Chali Chalitko. Chalitko yeah. and Alexander Trefimchuk. Yeah, right. From uh, hard Czech to pronounce. Hard to of. pronounce, but uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, th they seem very nice, actually. So uh, uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Thanks. Hello. So first of all, uh, I'm very pleased to present to such a great crowd here at BotConf. And uh, let me introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Alexander Chalitko, and I'm a um, uh, team leader for malware re uh, reverse engineering team at Checkpoint. And this is my colleague, Alexander Trefimchuk. Uh, who works as a malware researcher in my team. So today I will be talking about uh, DJ clustering and analysis, mastering modern and involving threads, and in context of the system that we've developed over the last couple of months called DJ Lab. And then my colleague will present a live demo to you. Uh, so let's move on to the presentation. Uh, DJ, I bet you've heard it a million of times already. And nevertheless, let's discuss briefly what DJ is. DJ stands for Domain Generation Algorithm. And this algorithm periodically generates a large number of domain names, uh, which are known to the malware author. Uh, the malware author then pre-generates a tiny number of those domains uh, before the start of the campaign. Um, malware and client machines uh, start its attempts to connect to the CNC server from checking for internet connection. And uh, if it's successful, it then iterates over the malicious domains until it finds one that resolves to an actual IP address uh, and is accessible at the moment. And this kind of attack, uh, as it was already said, is hard to preemptively block. So let's define the problems uh, while fighting DJ malware. Uh, we don't know which domains will be pre-registered by attacker. And there are too many domains that will be registered uh, every day. So and only a small number of uh, them will actually be contacted by the malware. Therefore, it's not feasible to pre-register and block them all, uh, uh, making sinkhole not effective in its current form. Uh, and this entire process can be easily automated uh, because sinkhole involves uh, some kind of uh, cooperation from, from law enforcement agencies, such as Europol, for example. Um, so that's why we've developed our system called DJ Lab. Uh, overall, the system uh, greatly helps us to categorize and preemptively block DJ-enabled malware, malware very efficiently. So uh, that's why we want to share this idea with you. Let's talk about it in more details. Uh, we support four different types of DJ. The first one is the simplest type called static DJ. Uh, static DJ is type of DJ when the generated output is not dependent on uh, date or seed. And it's most likely um, the kind of DJ will, that will generate the same domains every time. So it's simple to re-implement the algorithm and grab the output and block th uh, the traffic according to that. Uh, the second type of DJ is date-based DJ. So the current date is used as input for the algorithm to generate domains. And it's usually a very big um, and we can reverse engineer this executable once, re-implement the algorithm and pre-generate all fu future domains. The third type is seed-based DJ. This type of DJ uh, utilizes hard-coded seed uh, as input for the algorithm. That seed is a usually a very big number, and uh, which can be predicted or easily extracted from the executable without reverse engineering. Uh, in addition, adversaries uh, can change the seed between the different executables while they're using the polymorphic cryptors and uh, also between the different campaigns. So simply re-implementing this algorithm will not help you uh, to get uh, all the domains from different executables. And the most annoying DJ is a combination of date-based DJ and seed-based DJ. Uh, so we need a special type of virtual machines to deal with it. Uh, let's take a look at the main features of DJ Lab. Uh, we have designed DJ Lab to be able to operate successfully with all types of DJ. To do so, we created a separate model for each family type. Uh, and um, the system itself can be easily extended to support even new thread types when they arise. 
while many others generate only uh, a partial list of domains, we generate a full list uh, almost every time. This means an extremely high and early detection rate. Uh, DJ Lab has an ability to combine multiple sim uh, similar DJs into one category. And uh, also, as we're trying to generate a full list of domains, we pass the traffic through our fake DNS server. And afterwards, the malicious traffic uh, never leaves our environment. Uh, so the um, um, our guys have no clue that we're investigating them. And um, however, we can whitelist any domain to be accessed by the malware and return a real page to it. Uh, this is necessary as a lot of malware is checking for internet connection um, and will just stop the emulation if they detect no connection uh, and so uh, generate the zero domains after all. And also we don't need a lot of resources to process large amounts of s samples daily. Uh, the average emulation time is approximately like three minutes and restoring the virtual machine uh, to initial state is almost instantaneous due to the use of the RAM drives. Uh, we also collect and provide a lot of statistics such as families, categories inside them, detection rate, uh, samples prevalence, uh, and the most active periods, and a lot more. And this information is uh, highly useful for intelligence needs and is represented uh, in a friendly manner on our web interface. Uh, once we've got generated domains for a category, all further domains that generated the same domains, even those undetected by AV engines, for example, zero-day malware, uh, will be assigned to that category as well and detected based on, the, on these domains. And most vendors can uh, look only, on, only into the past, while we can pre-generate domains for the future. So this is achieved using a specifically designed custom virtual machines. Uh, this feature gives us an advantage uh, of generating domains and possibility to block threats for patient zero computers. Uh, so, what's under the hood? Uh, we implemented new features and refactored a lot uh, of Cuckoo Sandbox and Cuckoo code to, to deal with the main problem of emulation, detection of virtualized environments. So, uh, we also increased stability in <laughs> by fixing a lot of critical bugs. Also, from the beginning, we noted that VirtualBox, which is used in conjunction with Cuckoo, does not meet our requirements. So after a lot of testing, we've decided to use uh, VMware Workstation instead. Um, DJ Lab doesn't use any product out of the box. So we implemented a lot of fixes and adjustments and refactored a lot of codes uh, to achieve our goals. So this includes fixes to Cuckoo, Cuckoomon, DLL, NetBIOS, and TCP IP stack and Windows that we use inside our virtual machines. Also, writing our own kernel mode driver. And also, we developed this uh, kernel mode driver to handle problems, problems with detection of virtualized environments and other fixes. Um, this helps us to increase our successful emulation rate by 40%. So let's define our categorization system of the malware. Uh, we download samples uh, that with a pre-assigned family uh, that we've got from our samples feed provider. And then we emulate those samples using a number of VMs. Uh, we take the results and categorize them using a unique name uh, for each category. So. We can also reassign samples uh, family after the emulation stage. Um, let's imagine the situ situation when we received a sample that uh, feed provider marked as simi family. Uh, so after the emulation, we recognize that the generated domains actually belong to Timba family. Uh, the DJ lab reassigns the samples from simi family to the Timba family automatically based on the domains. Uh, so let's take a look at the DJ Lab overall statistics. Uh, at the moment, we support more than 28 uh, distinctive families. Also, DJ Lab has already processed more than 100,000 uh, samples. Uh, 500 uh, plus categories have been discovered, and we collected more than 700,000 unique malicious domains divided by categories during the DJ Lab operation. Um, so let's take a look at a specific family, for example, well-known Timba. Uh, we've got more than 68,000 total samples processed just for Timba. Uh, 120 uh, unique categories were detected. 
and more than 100,000 unique domains collected just for this family. Here are the statistics uh, by category for Tinva. We can see that the most prevalent categories here, and this is really useful for intelligent guys, so they can see which category is prevalent in the moment. And uh, let's sum up. Uh, we we'll gather domains even from samples that fail to execute on other popular platforms, such as Aristotle, Malware, uh, due, due to our fixes. Um, DJ Lab is able to automatically feed gather data to threat intelligence databases, uh, which shift an almost zero false positive rate. Uh, DJ Lab features light and fast categorization even of an unknown malware using the generated domains, and uh, we're pretty efficient. So emulation of one sample takes approximately three minutes. And now I will pass you over to Alexander Trefinchuk for a live demo of our system uh, web interface. So thank you. We'll sleep, switch laptops. Now I will demonstrate our DJ Lab system web interface. Each family has its own DJ source implemented in Python. Families are grouped by the first letter in alphabetical order. The static families are displayed in black and the emulated type families are displayed in blue. The emulated type families has its own uh, uh, tooltip with basic identifying information. The family type number of categories, uh, total number of samples, percentage of family samples in DJ Lab, total number of domains of this family, and uh, family creation date. Let's look at static date-based uh, family, for example, configRC. We have uh, the following information displayed on this page. The family name, uh, family type, number of domains per day, TLDs list, uh, possible domain lengths by the algorithm and brief family description. The DNS list for five days is displayed at the bottom of the page. Each DNS list can be cropped out to 2000 domains to optimize a preview of this page. But the uh, whole DNS list can be exported using export data button. So let's look at the static non-date-based family, for example, she's. We have similar information displayed on this page, but uh, there is only one DNS list. Sorry. Uh, so let's take a look at the uh, emulation time family, for example, Tinba. The family statistics are displayed at the top corner of the page and contain the following information. Total number of samples, number of samples processed, skipped, with category and without category, and percentage of samples with category. A simple graph to the right of the statistics box uh, displays uh, the number of samples with category in blue and number of s total samples in gray per day for the last 60 days. We can see how many samples were analyzed and how many of them have been assigned to a category. The list of categories displayed at the bottom of the page and uh, displays the number of categories in the header. Each category has the following information. The category name, first domain, TLD list, number of domains, number of samples, and date last seen. The last seen on field shows us last time we saw a sample for this category. We use this data, we can uh, recognize active categories. Uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, some category details. The category details are displayed at the top of the page and contain uh, category name, family name, first domain, CLD list, uh, 
category creation time and time last sample was added to the category. The references list is displayed below the category details. And there are, as a chase, 256 of samples which belong to this category. Uh, the domains list is located at the bottom of the page. Each domain uh, domains are displayed in the original order of appearance. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some analysis report. The file details and the analysis details are displayed at the top of the page. The DNS list is displayed at the, at the bottom of the page. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Tinba uh, category statistics. The first diagram displays the top 25 categories by the number of samples in each category. We can easily see which category is most prevalent. We can assume that each category can belong to a different trait actor. Uh, the family category statistics are displayed below the diagram. There are this corresponding activity graph for each category. Each graph is composed using first seen sample dates obtained from Verostotl and grouped by the months for a one full year. This data shows us categories activity and helps us see a campaign's activity time range. Uh, it's time for scheduling statistics. The categories activity for the last 30 days is displayed at the top of the page. We can display the following types of events. Creation of a new category and addition of a samples to a category. We can update the treat intelligence knowledge base with a new category almost immediately after it appears. The scheduling activity for the last 30 days is displayed at the bottom of the page. Each line has the following information. Uh, date and time when search a download task was started and finished, the family name and the number of downloaded samples. Finally, let's look at the export page. Export page allows us to export all the DJ Labs data in JSON format. We can export all types of families or emulated type families only. For the database DJs, we have option to export domains for plus minus 45 days, including today, or to export domains only for today. Also, we have option to select pretty print if we want an easy, easily readable JSON at the output. Thank you. Okay. We have some time for questions. John, you're smiling. You have a question. No? This guy. Hi, uh, my time from Fars Uh Thanks, guys. That was interesting. Um, so one question. Um, there are also, I believe, DGAs that use some kind of unpredictable value of the future, say the do euro dollar exchange rate at midnight. I can hardly hear you actually. Okay, so um, there are, I believe there are DGAs that use, um, that cannot be predicted because they use a, an, an unknown value of the future. Yeah. Say some kind of... Seed, we call it seed. Well, no, but a seed, uh, um, for example, a DGA that uses, say, the, um, that looks up some data on the internet that can't be predicted. Okay, on the whitelisted like server, like for example Twitter or something like that, yeah. So it gets the seed yeah. from there and yes. yeah. Okay. I, have you looked at that or we we can we sure can take care of that kind of uh, situation because we have like whitelist uh, of domains uh, from Alex uh, first one million and we can access uh, the malware can access whitelisted uh, hosts, so it can get the data, data that it needs to to produce domains so we m even if it's on the third party servers okay thanks over there state your name uh dmitry from a secure well aha uh -huh. check thank you guys спасибо <laughs> uh, and the question is uh, how do you integrate 
uh, uh, DJI Lab results or DJI Lab into uh, checkpoint products? Actually, uh, we're working on that integration right now, and uh, we have a product um, that is uh, using some kind of uh, real intelligence database uh, on our gateways, and it inspects the traffic on the network level, and uh, so we feed our database to that solution and it inspects the traffic and if it uh, sees any of those domains it just blocks, the c blocks this communication and raises an alert or any other action that is selected by administrator. Okay, I see. Is it, is it checkpoint firewall? Uh, no, it's not a product. Yeah. It's... Okay. Okay, thanks. There was another question around here? Yeah. Uh, hi, Jonathan from Fox IT. So you guys basically take samples and you classify them based on domain characteristics? So like domains look similar and that's how you make groups, right? Uh, basically, inside the, mm, the different families, for example, you'll take the one family, for example, Timba, and uh, you have a different uh, seeds of each sample that is hard-coded in each sample. And th this will generate a different domains um, for different type of samples. So we take the output of the um, um, sample and we categorize uh, this by domains that were generated. Basically, we have, for example, well, 1,100 uh, samples and uh, only 120 c categories inside them, uh, distinctive categories. Because for out of this large number of samples, we have um, only 120 distinctive categories that generate the same domains. So each of the category generates the same list of the domains. So it's limited number of categories. Okay, yeah, because I was wondering if you also do some classifications beforehand. So if you know samples are related already, you can already classify them in certain groups without oh. uh, checking DJ uh, patterns, basically. We're doing like uh, um, also um, SHA 20, uh, 256 um, sk skipping procedure, uh, so we don't pr uh, process the same samples twice, but we, d uh, we don't categorize them based on some other um, on some other things other than domains. Actually, so we regenerate domains, look at these domains, and if if they are the same, we're putting it in the same category. All right, all right. that's it. Thanks. Last question here. I don't think it's on. Ah, there we go. Um, first of all, uh, you said that uh, you have the ability to export uh, the stuff that you detect to other threat intelligence systems. Yes, right. Um, is that something that uh, is accessible to anyone, or do we have to do that by request? Actually, at Checkpoint, we have like a lot of open source produ products lately, like CuckooDroid, uh, like the plugin that were developed by our system uh, called um, Labless for IDA, for reverse engineers. Um, so we sh uh, share a lot of data, uh, but this project is actually uh, like for internal use only because it's like a competitive advantage for us. So we're okay. sharing the idea of it, but we're not sharing the databases actually. Oh, so, so you don't have any kind of uh, feed or anything that you can share with other people? We we're just don't have it at the moment. Maybe later, but at the moment, we don't have any. OK, and if I have uh, f another minute, I just wanted to get a clarification. on. So if you get a, a malware sample, um, can you immediately derive what kind of algorithm is used to generate these domains? Um, uh, don't you have to like run a sample multiple times uh, uh, on different dates and different times just to determine if it's time-based seed or a different kind of? OK, for example, there are it's a kind of long answer because if it's just a date-based malware, we have like um, we're implementing the algorithm using the reverse engineering first of all. Okay, so we're implementing this algorithm in our system, so we don't need to run the sample every time. We're just testing if it's date-based <laughs> malware first of all. So we're running the malware first of all with a one date, then with another date. If if the outputs are different, then it's probably the date-based malware, and we are further investigating that and reverse engineering it. 
And uh, okay, so, so you do not just dynamic analysis as well. You also do more of a uh, static yeah, analysis. Yeah, for the cases that we need, uh, but it's only need to be done only once, and this is advantage basically. And this is all the information within one system. And the more s uh, the more harder uh, harder case is when you have like a date based and also a seed based. Seed is like a random number, for yeah. example. And then we need a special type of virtual machine, as I mentioned. So it will adjust the date. Uh, and we pre-generate domains for a future, for example, for a future for 45 days, and we then we feed it to the threat intelligence database. And you do that using Kukumon by uh, uh, modified DLL, and you just... Uh, it's... Um, no, basically not. Uh, as I said, it's like we refactored a lot of code. It's no mo It's like not a Kuku anymore, uh, but uh, it's done using the different technique and the fake DNS servers and everything else, so... We're using another approach with that, <laughs> but we can do even with this kind of uh, DJ type, we can do good stuff. So I think. Okay. Well, thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.